All right. We made it through the night. There was only three bear sightings. And one of them was in the tent with me. <laughs> Looking fancy. He's self-conscious of his hair. My hair? Yeah, my hair's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I found out about 5 a.m. how to sleep. <laughs> so, so, so next time we'll be good. I still feel wet, but it's not like touching stuff wet. It's just the humidity wet. But I don't know what that is. Your breath. Yeah, it's my breath. Anyways, rain's not supposed to start until around 12 or 1 or 2. But it, That's the approximation. It, it feels... And I brought coffee. Mm. So we're going to make some coffee. And then tear down the campsite. And then if it's going to rain or not, we're going to go to the falls. Or if it looks like it's probably going to rain or... I don't know. We're just going to assess the situation. Anyways, just wanted you to know we didn't get mauled. Anyways, that's our update. I'll show you our coffee later. Well, look at that. The bag of trash made it. So this has been fun. It's been a, an interesting time. I, uh, I don't really like tent camping, but I also think that there's just something about being in the outdoors. But it's just nice to kind of not have worries or uh, obligations. We begin our journey back in um, probably the next hour or so. He wants to go to uh, some falls, but I'm a little worried about rain. It's been real windy tonight, last night rather. I'm worried that we'll get to the falls and it'll be really cool and then we'll have to walk like five miles um, back to our car in the rain and that doesn't sound fun to me at all. I'm making this coffee. All right, success on the coffee. Success on dad. Uh, Packing up the everything. So now we're going to eat a little breakfast. And I think our breakfast is going to end up being peanut butter and some uh, tortillas. So tell everybody the story about Uncle Charlie. <laughs> well, my first hike was planned with my Uncle Charlie, who is 20 years older than I am. And uh, my cousin Mark, who is 10 years younger than him, Went to uh, Smith and Mount Ice Water Springs, beautiful views, video of my wife, everybody's doing pretty good. The next day with the jaunt was to go to uh, Peck's, Peck's Corner. So they sent me ahead, being as young as I was, <laughs> to get the top bunks and reserve them. So I'm taking off and I made it. I get there, I'm even, I'm concerned if I missed it. I actually called a buddy of mine, sent him my location, said, hey, how far am I, am I away from Peck? Because I can't seem to find this place. And it's, I've been walking for hours, it seems like, you know, and I'm way far away, I'm by myself. He said, no, man, you look like you're about two and a half miles away still. Oh, no. And I get to Peck's, and I set up my bed, and I blow up everything, I lay up my sleeping bag, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and then finally here comes Mark, and he's huffing. I said, dude, you all right? I just, that was a rough one right there. I, well, here, give me your bedroll and I'll get it ready. Where's Where's Charlie? I don't know, he's behind me somewhere. And then Charlie comes bebopping in five minutes, 10 minutes later. And and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, he's dead. <laughs> and, I, and I take his pack off of him, I blow up his bedroll, he gathers himself, he thinks he's gonna be fine. We rest and we get up to leave to go home, which is gonna be 10 miles going home. And before we made it up, shoot, half a mile up from where our pecs was down in this hole, he said, I don't know if I can make it. I don't make it. Let me strap your backpack on the front of me, and that way you won't have that to carry, and we'll get further, because we got a long ways to go, Charlie. He said, no, I won't make it. About another 100 feet. I said, Charlie, 
because he stopped and he looked like he was about to wobble off. I said, I can't worry about you because part of the AT is right on the edge of death. So I said, Charlie, you've got to give me your pack so we can try to make it somewhere. We're not, we got 10 miles to go here, Charlie. <laughs> and he says, uh, uh, okay, okay, but just for a while until I get my bearings. That's fine, whatever. And so I strap his on the front of mine. He snaps it in the back. So I've got, I am a pack mule at this point. Sure. He's walking. He's on his sticks. He's leaning hard on his sticks. Next thing you know, he starts to topple left. I grab him. I said, Charlie, what's going on? He said, I've just, <laughs> just got to get my bearings. I don't feel real good. I said, we need to sit down and call somebody and get them here to come pick you up. And, oh, I'll be all right. Walks a little bit more. And then he just passes out. I see his knees buckle. <laughs> I've got two packs on. I grab his, all I do is grab his coat and to keep him from hitting his head all the way down to the ground. I call 911. I've got a signal on top of the mountain. 911. 911. This is how many have you? I said, well, I am on, I am about seven miles from, from Mount Lacan and about three miles from Peck's Corner on the AT. And my brother-in-law can't go any further. He's passing out heart, claiming, claiming heart. He even made it mention, do, he even made mention, do you, do you feel weak in one side of your body for having a stroke? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not oh letting you die. <laughs> I'm not letting you die on this mountain up here. And the 911 lady says, no. She says, you're where? I said, I'm seven and a half miles or so away from where we started. And I'm three and a half miles away from this place on the AT. Oh, well, you'll have to. I, I, won't, I won't hang up on you, but I'll have to get you to a different location. We're not in charge of that. So I'm waiting on the phone, and sure enough, boom, dial tone, nothing. They hung up on me. So I oh called 911 again, and this time it's a guy. I said, dude, and I explained him the same thing. Said, well, you're where? And they just like, they don't believe me or something. I said, dude, look. And I sent him my, my location. Well, I have to get you to the ranger station. The ranger station says, you're where? Of course, they believe me. They know. And they said, well, there's two ways. You can either prepare him for life flight on the helicopter off the mountain, or we have to take what they call a donkey, which is a one-wheeled wagon. It's, a, it's like a cage, like you'd see on a, on a, on a helicopter, res, helicopter rescue thing. I said, well, dude, first of all, the trail is as wide as this log. Yeah, right. And you're not gonna get anybody on each side of him ever. And I don't think that's going to be an option. Well, we'll we'll have to we'll have to just see how is what's he stable right now? I said, well, yeah, he's he slipped, he passed out, he threw up, he's passed out again. Now he's just sitting there freezing. You, but you need to prepare him to be able to to go. I said, well, how long is it going to take you to get here? Well, we can come into campground in the back and take the three and a half miles from there, probably four hours. <laughs> I'm four hours. So I realized that Charlie's not going any further. I got emergency coming. Oh no. I take off running because Mark took off to get ahead of us. Actually, he just took off. So I'm thinking, you know, I need Mark to help me out here. So right. I put off, took off my pack. I left my phone because somebody's supposed to call. I called my sister, I called my wife. Somebody's supposed to call and let them, you know, so they know they're not worried about us. And I took off running. The whole time I went, Mark, Mark. And uh, finally, about two miles into it, I hear, what? And he stops. I get to him, I say, Mark, Charlie's passed out on a rock and they're talking about, you know, life flight and probably need to come back. Well, what am I gonna do, Ronnie? I said, well, you're gonna be there with me for one thing. Well, what am I gonna do? There's nothing we can do. I said, okay, I just ran two miles for nothing. Take off, yeah. you know, take off. So I'll jog back because I'm worried about Charlie. Sit there for four hours. The Rangers get there. They call somebody. They call and they say, well, it's, if, if the, the helicopter won't come if it's after dark. And it's like 45 minutes from dark. So a minute later, I hear, what's the status of our patient? Such and such, blah, blah, blah. This is such and such, such and such. I don't know who he's talking about or what he was. And they said, he's stable, high blood pressure, you know, cold, blah, blah. He's, he's doing all right. But heart palpitations or something. Our ETA is two minutes. <laughs> it was the Coast Guard. <laughs> they got there like that with a Jeez. team of doctors and I wasn't, it wasn't a second after he said that, that I was hearing off in the distance. I videoed the whole thing. Charlie on life, lifting him up from nothing. Video. Oh my goodness. So the world will be able to see. Fun story.
Yeah, fun. First, first trip on a hike. It's a wonder I'm ever coming back out again. I know, right? The truth is, it's the most beautiful thing you can do. You don't have to hear cars. You don't have to hear traffic. You don't have to hear. You just got to worry about bears. I have a real fa fear of bears. I didn't really know that until dad asked me to come on a hike. And even last night, when because because the dad has like this little foyer thing between his his uh, tent. What what is it? What is the thing that goes on the tent? It's a fly. A fly. And so he's got this like little area that you can set your packs in so that they don't get wet. Like if it rains or if it gets a uh, like little dewy outside. We were sleeping last night, and I was keenly aware that we didn't have the the bear spray in the tent. It was out in the in the sack. I was a little worried about that for some reason. All right, we're off again. We decided to go to the falls because it's not supposed to start raining here until what, two? What was decided? Two o'clock? Yeah. So we're thinking that we'll have enough time to go um, and do that. So what is this? Is it just a rickety old bridge? Yep. It's awesome. It's yeah, a little, little fall uh, uh, right there. We could just say we came to the fall. Because <laughs> that hill right there is going to suck. Going up. We're almost there. Not far. It's real close. Yeah, you're lying. I'm not lying. It's like another mile. No, it's like 0.4. Like 0.3. Point 0.4? Point 0.3. That's forever. Point you're rounded down. Oh, I'm not rounded down. Well, I don't know if you can hear me or not, because the falls are pretty loud, but we made it to the falls here. It's called, what is it called, falls? Greeter Falls. Greeter Falls. Here it is. Look at that. Greeter Falls, we may not make it back, but we, got, we made it here. Yeah, this was, been, this was the roughest part of the trip, actually. It was only about a mile and some change away from the uh, campsite that we were at, but it was like, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And that was pretty tough for me. Now we gotta go up that that staircase all the way up. And then it's more jagged rocks like what you see here. Okay, so I am soaked to the bone. Dad is even more so soaked to the bone <laughs> because I was wearing his jacket because he's a just a saint oh my gosh let me just tell you it started raining when did it start raining as soon as we got to the furthest point of our trail we had got it started raining while we were taking pictures the last time we talked to everybody at the bottom of greeter falls which is the furthest that we would ever be so, so it took us Four hours and 22 minutes to travel 7.3 miles. And the reason is because you And boy, an average of 1.9 miles an hour. That's because of me. The the travel to and from the, um, the falls was extremely um, difficult. Yeah, it was difficult. It was not an easy uh, trek. It started raining at the falls. At it kind of let off until falls. we get back to the camp which was like a mile and some change. And then from then on, and to, from camp on, we, we were just, it was raining constantly. It was a fun time. It's very long. Probably shouldn't have tried to tackle, what, 13 miles or something like that for my first, or one of my first hikes. But I didn't realize how hard the trek was from Alum Gap Campground to greeter falls that's my problem anyways we had fun it was a good time pops and and now walk, we're gonna walk go around dry and have some food find some food right so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it it was fun for us you get to i wish i could have captured a little bit more of just the absolute struggle it was for me to go any miles per hour, but we made it back and we are gonna be dry relatively soon. So have a good one.